What's the word, y'all? Oh my god. I cannot be more excited to record a video. Last time we did a post-game video, it was six minutes long because there was nothing to talk about. The, the Lakers had dominated the first two games of the finals. But ladies and gentlemen, the Heat have heart. And they come out in game three. Jimmy Butler has the best game of his NBA career. I'm, I'm literally rocking the Jimmy Butler shirt. I could not help myself. And I'm excited to talk about basketball with y'all. Right here on my side. Today's my 24th birthday, so there's my festive things from, from my stepmother. Shout out to her. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Like, she made this, which is incredible. So shout out to her. I have to reiterate this because I know there are going to be some people watching this video that don't know who I am. Um, it just pops up and you're recommended. I have to say... I am not a fan of the Lakers or the Heat. I am a, a neutral basketball fan in this NBA Finals. All I want is as many games as possible. That's all I'm asking for. As a fan of basketball, am I crazy for just wanting the maximum amount of games because I know that we won't get another basketball game for a couple months. So I just I just wanted the series to be competitive. We've been doing these post-game videos for the entirety of the, of the finals, and the first two episodes, it wasn't really anything to talk about. The last video literally was seven minutes long because the only thing I could say was Anthony Davis was unstoppable. The Lakers were dominating. LeBron was LeBron. Rondo had a pair of... Of, of Kobe uh, PE zone from Reebok. That was all I could say for the seven minute video. And we basically were just talking about like, oh snap, this series is actually not as fun as we thought it was gonna be. And here we go, we have a series. It's at least going to five. And that is something I am happy about. I'm also happy that Jimmy Butler had the best game of his career today. It took all of it. It took all of the best game of his career for them to win. So that could be saying something in itself. You know what I'm saying? That could be saying something in itself. But either way, they got the victory. They got the victory. And sometimes I try to do this. It's hard to do this. But I, I would recommend this. If you're just trying to watch a basketball game and you just don't, don't really know what to do, try to look at it as a fan that has never watched a game of basketball before, that don't know who LeBron is, that don't know who Anthony Davis, Jimmy Butler is, and try to see who the best player on the court is. Today, it was Jimmy Butler, undoubtedly. A 40-point triple-double. I mean, the box score says it all. But the moments in the game said it was Jimmy Butler. It, it had to be. It started off very early when Anthony Davis got into foul trouble. And that foul trouble got into him mentally. And he was just not as aggressive as you would want Anthony Davis to be. For the first two games of the series, we were really having a conversation of who's going to be finals MVP, LeBron or Anthony Davis. And, well... LeBron still had a normal LeBron-esque game. Anthony Davis did not. And what I saw a lot on Twitter and my mentions, because I do live tweet these shows uh, at klt 4 q if you want to follow me, if you don't already. I saw a decent amount of Lakers fans blaming the referees for this. And it's just, I have never understood it. This is not, I'm not just saying Lakers fans, because this happens all the time. When your favorite team loses a game in your brain, the refs missed the call there. And oh my God, Jimmy Butler got another one. Oh, my God, Anthony Davis only went to the free throw line a few times. Anthony Davis didn't do anything this game. It wasn't because of the referees were hoeing him out of some fouls. He just wasn't aggressive. It was the referees, but LeBron traveled two possessions in a row. Those were legitimate travels. The, this is what I have to say. There are situations where the refs miss calls. It's, it's going to happen because it is a man-made job. It is based on your eye at the end of the day. And humans make errors. So, yes, you're going to miss calls. You're going to call phantom calls. It's part of the game. Now, what you really have a conversation with is if all of those phantom calls are going against your favorite team or your favorite team can't get anything. In this game, it was pretty evenly called. It was not. Again, there's no such thing as a perfectly called game. But it was even. And that's all you can ask for the refs. Jimmy Butler has had this thing for this season, and actually the last season he played for the Bulls, where he had have an in innate ability to draw fouls he's not on the level of James Harden but he's right there at like number two in the league at drawing fouls it's just what he does it's actually kind of an art sure it's an art that slows down the game and maybe not great for the viewing aspect but he has always been that this is not they just started to give Jimmy Butler fouls in game three he has always been the type of player to draw a bunch of fouls and it was amplified since he's been in Miami and it was amplified his last year in Chicago so the referees didn't have anything to do with this if you go look at all five I think it ended up a five four fouls of Anthony Davis only one that I saw that was questionable and guess what Frank Vogel kept him in the game it wasn't like they called that foul and then he had to go to the bench for 10 minutes he stayed and played the entirety of the rest of that third quarter and that was 10 minutes 
He was on the court. He just wasn't aggressive. That is not the referee's fault. That was his fault at the end of the day. Um, the Miami Heat came out with the game plan. We're going to run the zone uh, like, we us- like we usually do. But this time, oh, well, actually, no, no, we're going to run a lot of man. But this time, we're not switching everything. When Duncan Robinson gets put in the PNR like he had been throughout this entire series, we're just not going to switch it. We're not. You're not going to go out there and hound Duncan Robinson because we know he's the weakest link on the defensive side of the ball. So we need everybody else around him to fight as hard as they can through the screen so we don't have to switch. And they did that. They Last game, they got killed on the glass. Anthony Davis was killing them. They shut all of that down today. And at the end of the day, you add those up. Good defensive scheme. Good boxing out. No offensive rebounds given up. And a Jimmy Butler 40-point triple W. Have yourself a victory. Now. Can you, can you mimic that for another game and another game and another game is the real question if you really want to win the series. But overall, as a fan of basketball, this has been the best finals game this year. And that's all we wanted. We didn't want it to be blowout after blowout. I mean, sure, Lakers fans probably wanted it because it's an easy ring. But the other fans that are not associated with these two teams, we just wanted good game after good game. And the first, for the first time, we have a really good game. It's beautiful. It is really beautiful. Today... The Lakers almost pulled it off, though. Markeith Morris. <laughs> Markeith Morris is either a player that's hitting all net or nothing at all. Backboard, air balls, whatever. Today, he hit a lot of shots, but he also air balled like three or four. In the last episode of this wrap-up, do y'all remember, I was saying, my, my boy Mike was like, man, they don't call him Danny Green. Oh, they don't call Danny Green dead shot for no reason. And I made the joke that, yes, they do. Let me see. I don't know what he ended up with as far as three-point shooting. 0 for 4. D- didn't even put up a, a field goal. He had, some two, he had two free throws. Didn't put up a field goal. Anthony Davis finished with 15. Unacceptable for, for the player that at one point was looked at to be the finals MVP favorite. 15 points. And again, no matter the fouls, he still ended up playing 32 minutes. I think he played 35 last game with no foul trouble. So he played three less minutes. Was those three minutes really the reason? No. Because when he was on the court, they were minus 26. They didn't come out to play. And it was very apparent from the very minute, very first minute in the game. There's no reason for the Miami Heat to come out and clamp you up to that extent in the first quarter, especially with all the struggles they had in game one and game two. Clamp you up for the first quarter and you guys not be able to score. It just, it just does happen. But at the end of the day, this is, this is what happens in game of basketball, right? Some games you're going to be on and some games you're not. What I want to look at is the three-point percentage. The Lakers shot over 30% for the first time and caught an L. The streak is dead. They shot 33% today. And a lot of that was Marquise Morris. Five threes from Kuzma had a good game for them as well. Um, but that was pretty much it. Well, I mean, LeBron, LeBron had a good game. Don't get me wrong. It just wasn't a LeBron, let's, let's win this game three type game, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? He had been that for the first two games. So I'm not tripping over that, um, especially since, I mean, the Miami Heat ended up getting this victory. So Kelly Olenek, the minutes we got of Myers Leonard, um, I think they did a pretty good job today. I think they did a pretty good job. Eric Spolstra also threw a double at uh, Anthony Davis, and very early in this game, we saw Iggy get thrown onto AD, and it actually worked relatively, I mean, it was a pretty good decision. Jay Crowder had been getting killed, uh, Kelly Olenek had been getting killed, Myers Leonard in the small amount of minutes from game two was getting killed, so it was like, listen, Iggy had the reputation of clamping up some of the greatest players of all time, finals MVP, remember that. Depending on who you ask, uh, he, depending on who you ask, tells you if he clamped LeBron up in that finals or whatever. He has a reputation as just being a very smart, logical, great defender. So we're going to throw him on Anthony Davis. And he didn't allow Anthony Davis to get to the paint area. Granted, Anthony Davis is one of the great mid-range shooters of all time. So um, even having him in the mid-range area is not the greatest, but they kept him out of the lane where he is the most dominant. There's a period of time late in the third quarter where Anthony Davis hit one of the toughest turnaround double-team shots I've ever seen. And then the next possession, he got like a, a slam dunk put back. And I was like, okay, this is what they need to come back. This is exactly what they need. They need Anthony Davis to ramp it up. He got one more shot for the remainder of the quarter, then that felt like it. There had to be a time where, as the leaders of the team of LeBron and Rondo, the floor generals of the team, were like, we have to get Anthony Davis involved. We cannot win a game if Anthony Davis is not involved. That's just a fact. They don't have enough surrounded pieces. If Anthony Davis does not have a great game, it's they're going to struggle to win the game. So I was hoping that LeBron was like, get, get, get down there. Get, get down there and give him a post touch and let him do his thing. And let him do his thing. But it just it just didn't happen to that extent. I'm happy to see Jimmy Butler do his thing. Um, he was talking trash, which maybe not the best. You don't talk trash to LeBron James. It just doesn't work out in your favor most of the time. Maybe 
Jimmy Butler's plan against the odds. I mean, it's what he's done all season, so maybe it does help him out. Because he said, they're in trouble now. They're in trouble now. It, it took me to drop 40 points in a triple-double, but they're in trouble now. So shout out to X Postra, the Miami Heat team. Um, J.R. Smith got some PT. And J.R. Smith loves that corner, step to the side. I'm almost out of bounds, throw the ball up. And you know what? He hits it a decent amount of time, so I'm not complaining about it. But he missed like two of them. Um, I'm trying to. I'm looking at the box score to see if there's anything else to remind myself. Uh, we talked about Kelly Olynyk, how he was pretty solid defensively. Um, Duncan Robinson was trying to. They were trying to get Duncan Robinson, but they struggled with that. And Tyler Hero, another another good game from Tyler. Ah, timely buckets from Tyler Hero. How about that? He had the end one at the very end of it that was kind of like the icer. So he didn't shoot the ball well, but he had timely buckets. And I guess you can decide which one is more important. At the end of the day, this was a good defensive scheme and a bunch of Jimmy Butler, which is great because if you remember the last series, um, when the when the, uh, the Celtics were starting to have this comeback and it was a real question of if the Miami Heat would be able to close that out, one of the things that me and my guys talked about on my podcast, that's Stu The Wire podcast, you can look that up on House of Highlights, Google, um, Google Podcasts, and all the other platforms, we were like, man, we want Jimmy Butler to be more aggressive. There was games where he had like 11 total shots, and he hit, he hit like seven of them. So how, how are we finishing that? You're, you're hitting it at a good clip. We need you to be more aggressive. And with no Bam and no Goran Dragic, he had no choice but to put it into overdrive. I don't know if this is something he can mimic for game four. I don't know if it will be because, again, 40-point triple-double is one of the all-time greatest performances in the NBA Finals. It is. We haven't spoiled about LeBron James. I can say that. LeBron has a couple of performances on this tier and above it. But from somebody not named LeBron James, this is one of the greatest playoff performances ever. Um, but I don't know. Can he mimic that for another game? I bet he nation hopes he can. And you know what? I kind of hope he can too so we can really have a conversation about this series. Because at this point in time, I would still pick the Lakers to win it all. But that could change. That could change. And I think that's all I have to say about this. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, subscribe if you're new. Let me know if your your overall perspective of this series has changed. If you're not a Lakers fan, you're not a Heat fan. I know Heat fans are on cloud now, and I know Lakers fans are probably still feeling pretty good. You know, it took one of the worst games of Anthony Davis's playoff life, literally, literally playoff life, for them to catch an L. I mean, he's averaging like 30 points in the playoffs throughout his career. He, he scored half of that today. So it literally took one of his worst games ever for the Heat to get a win. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll be back. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I, I really don't know. This, there's just no schedule here. I just upload when I feel like I want to talk. All right, bye.